Okay, this webinar is about the in-body test, and we're going to discuss the results interpretation, helping you learn how to read the results of your in-body test. So on the very top of the page, um, you're going to have the body composition analysis section. Um, the very first two values that you see are intracellular water and extracellular water. Um, so intracellular water is the amount of body water that's held within all the cells of the body. And as you may guess from the name, extracellular water is water outside the cells. When you add these two values together, this makes up the total body water. In our example on the PowerPoint here, uh, we have the total body water as being 109.6. And I should say that these values are all in pounds. Below the extracellular water, you have the dry lean mass value. So dry lean mass refers to the weight of the protein and mineral content in the body. And again, in our example, um, it is 40.3 pounds. By adding intracellular water, extracellular water, and dry lean mass, you get total lean body mass. In our example here is 149.9 pounds. Lean body mass is the weight of everything in the body that is not body fat. So this includes muscle, water, bones, organs, again, everything that is not body fat. Body fat mass, as you can see, is below dry lean mass. And the body fat mass value reports all of the body fat of the person that's being tested. And this includes both the surface level, or subcutaneous fat values, as well as the visceral fat levels, which we'll talk about more in a little bit. Switching to the very bottom, or close to the bottom of your page, is the extracellular water and total body water analysis. This compares the ratio of extracellular water to total body water. For most healthy people, the average ratio is going to be around 0.38, um, with an acceptable range being between 0.36 and 0.39. You can see that represented by the dash column. Um, fluctuations of extracellular water uh, divided by total body water are, are, are normal. This output is primarily used to give context to another section, the segmental lean analysis, an analysis, which we will go in depth on a little bit later. Anything above 0.39 may indicate uh, swelling, uh, having an excess amount of extracellular water. So going back to near the top of the page, the sex second section from the top is looking at the muscle fat analysis. So here we have values for total body weight, which is again in pounds. We have a section for skeletal muscle mass, which is the total weight of the uh, skeletal muscle. Uh, this section uh, of skeletal muscle mass um, is about muscles that can be grown and developed through exercise, of course. So unlike lean body mass, where lean body mass includes everything that isn't body fat, um, an increase in skeletal muscle mass can actually be viewed as actual muscle gain. Body fat mass is how much body fat you have. And this combines, again, both the surface level and internal or visceral fat, as mentioned previously. So you can see that there's three columns of where the value can end up. There's a down arrow column, a dash column, and an up arrow column. For each value, you can see the bar going across. And wherever the bar finishes tells you which, of course, column that you're in. Um, in general, it's best to try to be within the dash column for all values, which means you are around average, not too high or not too low. Uh, when we say average, we are always comparing to someone of your age and your gender and height, which we'll, again, we'll get to right away. You can see that in this example, although the middle bar is well into the up arrow column, this is not necessarily a bad thing since the value is for muscle mass. Similarly, this individual is also low in body fat mass, as you can see being in the down arrow column. Again, not, not necessarily a bad thing. If the values were reversed, then we would have a difference that we'd want to talk about. When you look at the muscle fat analysis section, as we are, um, you want to take a look at right in the middle of that dash column is the 100% mark. So the 100% mark, as well as all the percentage marks that you see, are based on what's considered normal for an individual of the specific height that uh, you put in when the test was, was taken. 
the markings uh, above the graphs allow you to compare yourself to others of the same height and gender. So while the healthy range varies as shown above, uh, 100 designates the average for individuals of, of, again, that same height and gender. So if the bar extends to that 115, this means that you are 15% above average. Again, you would be at 115% or 15% above 100. Similarly, if the bar extended to only to the 70% mark, this would mean that you have 30% less than what is considered normal for, again, your height and gender. So you can see that this individual in our example is slightly above average uh, in weight, although still within the dashed arrow column, approximately 25% or so above average in skeletal muscle mass, and about looks like 45 or 50% below average in body fat mass. Our next section discusses the obesity analysis. So we use two values, one being BMI, uh, also known as body mass index, which is measured by kilograms divided by meters squared, and percent body fat, which is measured by body fat mass uh, divided by total body weight. Normal range for BMI um, is 18 and a half to 25, and this is considered to carry the least health risk. It's the best uh, spot to be in, again, within that dash column. The range comes from the World Health Organization, which again, in body uses here, of course. Anything below that value, so below 18.5, would be considered to be under underweight. And being underweight does pose some health risk for issue, issues such as osteoporosis. Conversely, being above the normal range, um, again, above 25, uh, where 25 to 29.9 is considered in the overweight category, and anything above 30 considered in the obese classification. Um, being above poses increased risk for the different types of health issues, typically um, looking at an increased risk of metabolic syndrome, hypertension, diabetes, and some other chronic issues. Uh, as noted before, the closer you get your value to that middle dash column, the better off in general your risk of developing chronic disease will be. You will have less risk of being in that dash column. For the percent body fat, the ranges do differ for men and women, as women tend to carry more body fat than men due to just different uh, gender issues. Here the range for men is shown to be between 10 to 20 percent, and again we calculate this by taking the total body fat in pounds and dividing by total body weight in pounds to get that value. So in our, in our example here, this male is sitting at 8.2, which is slightly below the target range. Again, not necessarily a bad thing because we're talking about body fat. If this was muscle, we'd want it to be a little bit higher. Now we're showing the range value set for females, which is 18% up to 28% being the ideal. Again, due to differences in gender, um, again, physical differences, hormonal differences, um, females and males are going to have different ranges. So moving on to the segmental lean analysis section. So this area shows you how much lean body mass is contained in each segment, it's not, not how much muscle is in each segment. Uh, this is because lean body mass includes intra and extracellular water within those areas. You can see it's broken down on the left hand column between different areas of the body, um, right arm and left arm, trunk, right leg and left leg. Um, while it is true that um, muscle gains in any of those body segments could be reflected in this chart, not every gain in lean muscle mass, in lean muscle mass can be explained by muscle. Again, that's because lean body mass also accounts for water. So while this chart can show increases in muscle and track muscle gain or loss, um, it can also give you some information on injury and disease states because it tells you how much water is within those areas. So hopefully that clears up a little bit in the difference between lean uh, analysis and the muscle analysis. Um, but you can see on our example here that we've highlighted the top bar because there's two values for each. Um, the top bar shows you how much lean body mass in pounds is given in each segment. So in our example, the right arm has 7.72 pounds of, again, lean body mass. Just like with the muscle and fat graph earlier, um, this is comparing the pounds of lean body mass against the, against the average expected amount for this, this individual's gender and height.
again, the goal is to strive to be at least at that 100% mark and be within that dash column. This would show that you have sufficient lean body mass for your frame. The bar on the bottom is comparing your lean body mass against your measured body weight. So this is compared relative to you. This shows you whether or not there is enough lean body mass to support your own current body weight with 100 being sufficient. If your score is below 100%, such as in our example, you can see this individual's right and left legs are below 100%, they are 95.5 and 93.8 respectively, um, it means you may benefit from exercises that promote hypertrophy or increased muscle mass uh, because it can help you get to the, that 100% mark, which would again insinuate that you have enough muscle mass to support your frame. So the segmental fat analysis graph located on the upper right works very similarly. Uh, this section breaks down instead of lean body mass, this section breaks down the fat content for, for each segment in the body. In this example, uh, our individual has 3.3 pounds of body fat in their left arm. For a person of their height and gender, that's 158.9%, as you can see highlighted. Remembering that 100 is the average, it means that means that this person has 58.9 higher percentage body fat than the average person, again, compared to the same height and gender. As you may know, and we touched on earlier, there are two main types of body fat. There is subcutaneous fat and visceral fat. Visceral fat level shows the amount of visceral fat, the fat that's around the internal organs, and it's deeper. In an ideal world, we want this number to be 10 or lower. Having this value lower than 10 indicates a decreased health risk, while a value greater than 10 has an increased risk. In our example, this individual at level 12 has an increased risk. Below that is the basal metabolic rate. So the basal metabolic rate shows how much energy your body burns at rest. This is a baseline measure, and it does not take into account any calories needed uh, that are to perform daily activities. So do not use this value as a recommendation for dietary intake. Actual caloric needs from your diet will be like, much likely very much higher than basal metabolic rate because basal metabolic rate is strictly what your body burns at rest. Um, any extra physical activity you do, um, any energy that you burn um, when you're eating food, and any regular exercise can increase the amount of caloric needs. An increase in muscle mass usually means there's an increase in the basal metabolic rate. And this is one of the many reasons that participating in regular strength training can be beneficial. Again, more muscle mass means higher metabolism. On the bottom section of the graph, we have the body composition history. So this section shows uh, the tracking history of a few key measures if you do the in-body over multiple sessions. So with this feature, you can see positive or negative changes over time. In our example here, you're seeing skeletal muscle mass has slowly gone up over time. Um, it started at a value of 95.2 pounds and is now at 103 pounds. And percent body fat has gone lower from 10.2% down to 7.6%. So these are both examples of positive long-term changes. Finally, uh, back to the upper right portion, you see the body composition control. So this is designed to help individuals reach an ideal pot body composition as per um, just re general health recommendations. So this is defined as the reaching the average percent body fat for your gender, which is 15% for men and 23% for women. Depending on your current muscle fat balance, this section of the results sheet recommends adjusting body fat mass and or lean body mass in order to reach that average. While this section can and is helpful, it's important to note that it does recommend based on a single exact average. As we have seen earlier, there can be a wide range of values considered normal, so please remember that when you see the recommendations. In our example here, you're seeing that this individual is recommended for uh, optimal long-term health to decrease body fat mass by 18.3 pounds 
and increase lean body mass by 9.3 pounds. Thank you for uh, listening and watching, and I hope you learned.